Welcome fellow Stardust. Are you ready for a scare? I see you've come back for more. If you're new here, buckle up. And thank you all for joining me today. For today's video, we'll be counting down the top 10 horror movies of 2022. This year was a great year for horror. We got so many different kinds of films. On the other hand, there were also plenty of movies that I was looking forward to that let me down. But we're not talking about those movies today. Since all of these movies on this list are still fairly new, I'll be remaining spoiler free for the entire video. I did reviews on 8 of these movies, 2 of which were shorts, so I'll leave the links for those down in the description. Alright, let's get into it. At number 10 is Orphan First Kill. This was my most anticipated movie of 2022. The first film, Orphan from 2009, is one of my favorite films of all time. The twist is everything and somehow this prequel managed to deliver an equally surprising twist that I didn't see coming. First Kill wasn't as good as its predecessor, but it was damn fun. Isabel Furman reprising her role as a 9 year old child was well executed. It was believable and not too distracting. What I didn't like was this sort of a glow effect that was going on with the cinematography that was probably in effect to cover up any tricks they used with Isabel, since apparently they didn't use any CGI. As predicted, Julia Stiles and Isabel Furman together was absolute perfection, and there were so many elements from the first film that were seamlessly brought into the new film, while the new movie had its own thing going on as well. It was definitely important for the filmmakers to keep the setting similar to that of the first film. We had another affluent family who was drawn to the arts and at the top of the social ladder. These were similarities that helped to recreate the experience of the first film. That's not to say it was a copy of Orphan, I just don't think it would have worked as well with a completely different environment. With that being said, I'm keeping my fingers crossed for a second prequel. Orphan is now streaming on Vudu, Amazon Prime, and Paramount+. Plus. Coming in at number 9 is Scream, the requel. This was actually a pleasant surprise. This was the first Scream movie in the franchise not directed by the late and great Wes Craven. I was skeptical about how this was going to turn out, but they really focused on making this entry a love letter to Wes Craven. They also brought the franchise back to its darker roots. It almost felt like we were watching the first Scream movie, but with a fresh new storyline. Each film after the original became more lighthearted and focused on the comedy. While I enjoyed all four films, I really loved going back to this darker tone. We still get some laughs here and there, but nothing like the third and fourth films. With the darker tone, we also got some really fun and brutal kills. The number of new characters introduced was at first a bit overwhelming, but after a while, they grew on me and I became invested in them. We of course also had our legacy characters who, after 25 years, have returned for some vengeance. Seeing Dewey, Sydney, and Gale together was such a treat. Needless to say, I'm looking forward to the sixth film. Scream can be found on Voodoo, Amazon Prime, and Showtime. Next on the list at number 8 is You Won't Be Alone, an international co-production between Australia, the UK, and Serbia. It premiered at Sundance on January 22, 2022, and was in theaters on April 1st. This story features a young girl, Nevena, who was kidnapped by an ancient witch, Old Maid Maria, and turned into a witch herself. As she goes through life as a witch, she changes forms and goes from one body to the next, including the body of a dog. Because this is a very slow burn, it's not going to be for everyone. On top of that, it's not necessarily a linear story. We instead get a sort of anthology as we watch Nevena assume her different forms. Towards the end, we get more on Maria's origin story, which was incredibly tragic, but things took a bit too long to wrap up, and I wish we had gotten more of the origin story earlier in the film. This was the movie's major downfall, the runtime and the pacing of the third act. This was just a gorgeous film that made me feel like I was in some sort of ASMR chamber, while at the same time floating through Earth, seeing the world through the eyes of Novena. The atmosphere just sucks you right in, being set in beautiful Macedonia, with mostly exterior locations out in nature. And even though there may not have been a ton of gore, the scenes we did get with some special effects were great. I especially love the witch's talents. This one is on Vudu, Amazon Prime, and Apple TV. 
Now my number seven is going to be the one that brings the gore. And that slot goes to Terrifier 2. As a huge fan of the original film, this was another one of my most anticipated movies of the year. And man, did Damien Leone and David Howard Thornton deliver with this new installment. With the chainsaw scene in the first film being so popular and the one people responded to the most, David knew that the second film had to push it even farther. We once again have our supernatural serial killer clown haunting the dreams of his potential victim, brutally killing others along the way. Unlike the first movie, we have a more traditional storyline with a clear protagonist and Art as the antagonist. There was no question that Art was the antagonist in the first movie, but this time around we have character development, a story arc, and a conclusion. But honestly, the warrior thing with the magic sword and the runtime almost kept this movie from being in my top rated list. But I am curious to see where David Leone goes with this storyline because I know for a fact he's currently working on a Terrifier 3. So we'll see. Terrifier 2 is on Voodoo, Amazon Prime, and Apple TV. Being served up in the sixth position is going to be The Menu. I unfortunately caught the trailer for this movie a couple of times in the theater, but luckily not much was given away. As a lot of you know, I do my best to avoid trailers since they tend to show the best parts of the movie. But the trailer for The Menu showed just enough and didn't give us any big moments. It only teased us with just a taste. In this one, we have our rising scream queen, Anya Taylor-Joy, who has been invited to a highly coveted dinner at a restaurant on an island owned by a celebrity chef, Chef Slowick. As a foodie, I really loved this marriage of the culinary arts and horror. Our creepy chef is upset that people aren't showing enough appreciation for all that he does, all that he sacrifices for his art. So this dinner is a very special dinner. The all-star cast included John Leguizamo, who was also in Violent Night this year. There was also Rafe Fiennes, Janet McTeer, Arturo Castro, Peter Gross, and Nicholas Hall. With it taking place almost entirely in one location, the setting was sleek and a pleasure to look at, along with the delicious looking food. This one is still in the theaters, it's also streaming on Vudu and HBO Max. Coming in at number 5 is The Wonder. Florence Pugh plays an English nurse who has been commissioned to travel to Ireland to observe a girl who hasn't eaten in four months. She delivers another flawless performance that is moving. You can't help but root for her to succeed at the task at hand, despite the resistance she faces living in Europe in the 1800s. This movie highlights how religion can become dangerous. In this case, we have a family who were victims of war, famine, and family trauma which in turn led them to participate in deadly practices that Pew must now uncover. And once we do get to the big reveal, we're taken to a whole new level of horrific. The music and sound design put this movie over the top. It reminded me a lot of Suspiria with the sudden bursts of music that created an atmosphere of claustrophobia, confusion, and no way out. The Wonder is definitely a must watch and is now streaming on Netflix. Fourth on my list is Pearl. Oh, Pearl. It's almost hard not to feel bad for her. This, of course, was the prequel to X that also came out in 2022. Writer-director Ty West wanted to take advantage of the location where they shot X, so before flying back to America, he and Mia Goth wrote Pearl and shot the film right after rapping on X. And while I really enjoyed X, I just absolutely loved Pearl. I loved taking a closer look at Pearl and going back in time and seeing where it all started. This was an amazing character study where we got to witness firsthand Pearl become completely unhinged. The movie starts out with whimsical music and a happy-go-lucky Pearl, who seems perfectly polite, but it doesn't take long for them to show us Pearl's dark side. Even when things get dark, we still get the whimsical music and Pearl maintains her evil little smile. I cannot wait for the third film in this series, Maxine, which will also star Mia Goth. Maxine was also a character in X, and I'll just leave it at that. Ty West cranked out two successful movies in one year, directed two episodes of Them, which was amazing yet sad, as well as so many other TV shows and movies. He's quickly becoming one of my top horror directors. Pearl is also still in the theaters and is also streaming on Vudu and Amazon Prime. Number three goes to Jordan Peele's Nope, a movie that none of us were expecting from Jordan. 
We get a mix of sci-fi, comedy, horror, and western, and Jordan balances all of these really nicely. The cinematography was mesmerizing, especially the night scenes, the aerial shots of the Haywoods land, and when OJ is riding his horse around. I also appreciated the little bit of real history that was inserted into the film. The Haywoods were descendants of real life jockey that starred in the very first quote unquote motion picture, who was also a farm owner and cowboy. Most people don't associate black folks with cowboys. But this movie reminds us that there were plenty of black cowboys and girls, and they played a huge role in America's history as well as in the history of Hollywood. Jean Jacket was just a lot of fun to look at. If you haven't seen the movie, I don't think I'm giving anything away by saying that. If you've seen the trailers or teasers, it's obvious that this is an alien invasion movie, and it's one that stands out from all the rest that are out there. Jordan knows how to build suspense while also making us chuckle from time to time. Kiki Palmer's comedic timing is always on point, and seeing Daniel Kaluuya do his damn thing once again just puts a big old grin on my face. Nope is now on Vudu, Peacock, Amazon Prime, and Apple TV. Now, my top two movies could basically be interchangeable. It's hard to pick an absolute number one. These two films are very different, but also share some similarities. One film is a directorial debut, and the other is from a filmmaker whose work I've continually enjoyed throughout the years. The first film I'll speak about is Finnish creature feature, Hatching, which is Hannah Burgholm's first feature film. While you may notice some Cronenberg influences, this film was something new and fresh. It's hard to come by a completely unique film, but this one almost achieves that. In this story, we have a young girl, Tinja, who finds an egg in the woods in her backyard. Because she has an overbearing mother who's controlling and pushes her to do well in gymnastics for her own personal gain, Tinja finds comfort in caring for this egg. This is a movie that completely requires one to suspend their disbelief. You can't really overthink on this one, but instead, just go with the flow and enjoy the spectacle that it is. The creature in this film is just lovely. It hatched from the egg and was perfectly disgusting and creepy looking. It's hard to understand what exactly it is you're looking at when staring at this slimy thing. Hannah used both practical effects and a CGI, but the CGI was used only to enhance the features of the monstrous creature as it would grow and transform throughout the movie. The story explores themes of social mobility and greed. It's also a bit of a coming of age story for our lead, Tenja. Her mother's desires have created an environment that is sterile and cold, even though it might look beautiful and inviting to someone on the outside looking in. And it does look beautiful. This entire movie is just gorgeous. Hatching is now streaming on Vudu, Hulu, Amazon Prime, and Apple TV. And the last film to be discussed is Men. Oh men, oh men, oh men. I was lucky enough to watch this one in the theater. I wish I had gone to see it twice. This was quite the ride that I didn't want to get off of, with themes of trauma and abuse and gory visuals that seemingly make no sense. This one isn't going to be for everyone. So here we have Harper, who has just experienced a traumatic event with her husband, who has just thrown himself off the roof of their home. In order to heal and get over her guilt, she decides to go on holiday in London. However, she's unable to escape her demons. It's pretty difficult to talk about this film without giving away too much, but Alex Garland does a phenomenal job of giving us an atmospheric and emotionally driven masterpiece. While some visuals may not seem to always make sense, the overarching message is pretty clear. Toxic masculinity and guilt have crippled Harper, keeping her from moving forward with her life and living the life that she deserves. She instead is haunted by her past, and events that ensue are surreal and are likely happening in her head. This is another gorgeous film with a haunting soundtrack, and our two leads were phenomenal together. Everything about this movie is just perfect. I love it so much. It's currently streaming on Vudu and Amazon Prime. Well, there you have it, Stardust. My 10 favorite horror films of 2022. Let me know in the comments what your top 10 movies were. I'd love to know if we had any movies in common. And I'm so excited for 2023. There are a ton of films that I'm looking forward to. Let's hope that this year is just as fruitful as last year. 
Well, thank you again for joining me today, fellow Stardust. I appreciate you being here with me. I hope I see you next time. Peace.